Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. He has that kind of classic uh, up by your bootstraps kind of narrative. His name became synonymous for liberty. So, you know, it's all kind of the same story of the GOP establishment um, getting trounced basically by this uh, wing of the party who, you know, they have proven that they don't want anyone telling them what to do. I'm Rod Miley. We look to the Illinois side of the river to see the results of some of the primary votes that were cast yesterday in the biannual statewide election. Joining me to talk about the outcome of key contests is the government and politics editor for NPR Illinois, Hannah Meisel. Hannah, thank you for coming on and welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Rod, thanks for having me. Great. Thanks for being here. And it really wasn't a surprise that Democratic Governor J.B. Pritzker ended up with a big victory yesterday. But the much more interesting race was for the was in the GOP primary for governor. Uh, ultra-conservative state Senator Darren Bailey, who was a farmer from southern Illinois, won with 57 percent of the vote. And that was 41 more points than the nearest competitor. Was there really anything that surprised you about that race or not? I mean, I think the the outcome was not surprising, but, uh, you know, you just mentioned that margin of victory. I think uh, most folks who uh, follow this uh, pretty closely were, were pretty surprised by that margin. I think, you know, we had had, uh, first of all, Illinois has not had a primary this late, I think, since the Great Depression. Um, usually we hold our primaries in mid-March. It's dreary. It's rainy. Uh, and it's a much shorter uh, kind of primary season. Um, and, you know, it, it, there's a combination of things. There's good and bad to that. In the summer, you know, less folks are paying attention. But you do have a longer tail uh, in, you know, this year for people to pay attention and really get the flavor of each candidate. And uh, Darren Bailey is someone who has been, you know, he's had the advantage of having his name out there for, more than two years, because in the early months of COVID in 2020, uh, Darren Bailey uh, sued uh, the governor, J.B. Pritzker, over his COVID restrictions and uh, briefly won. Uh, He was the only person in the state who was uh, technically let out of uh, the stay-at-home orders. Um, That court decision was later reversed. But, uh, you know, didn't really matter what the facts are because this is someone who got out front and, you know, he was proclaiming uh, he was the one who was the answer to uh, the, you know, governor's so-called lockdowns. And, you know, he his name became synonymous for liberty, uh, you know, among a certain corner of the Republican uh, Party. And then, you know, that drumbeat just got louder. So really, he had that built-in advantage. Well, and it was a really expensive contest as well. Did you think money played a role in that race? Yes, but not in the ways that um, most people thought it would. Because um, Ken Griffin, who is, uh, or at least was, he is now moving out of Illinois, he announced last week, uh, moving his uh, Citadel uh big uh, firm with him. Uh, this is a huge moneymaker for Chicago and, you know, his philanthropy will uh, kind of leave a echo. But Ken Griffin has been a GOP mega donor for years and he had bet big on uh, the mayor of Aurora, uh, Illinois' second largest city. Uh, this name, this uh, mayor's name is Richard Irvin and he has a really interesting and compelling personal story. He is a Republican. Uh, He has that kind of classic uh, up by your bootstraps kind of narrative that Republican voters especially really love. Um, You know, he was black. He was raised in a low income area of Aurora and he entered the military and then became a federal prosecutor and then, you know, entered into local politics. So Griffin backed him and, and, you know, other candidates in this slate, which is a kind of new concept in Illinois. I don't know if it happens in other states, 
Um, but um, all but one of those uh, six members of this so-called slate that was backed by $50 million of Griffin's money uh, lost last night. Um, and does that include the Illinois 15th um, as we move on to that district with two GOP Congress people who are against each other yet, Rodney Davis, as well as uh, up against Mary Miller? And as we mentioned before, President Trump was at a rally near Quincy, Illinois, over the weekend where he endorsed, endorsed Miller. Yeah, you know, I think you can't really talk about, um, you know, the governor's race in the 15th district uh, race, you know, without, you know, mentioning the other because they're of the same story. Um, Rodney Davis has represented um, central Illinois in Congress for the last 10 years um, as a Republican, and he has spent, you know, many years before that, uh, you know, as a Republican staffer in D.C. He is you know, famous for his constituent services, um, you know, something that he's learned from his mentors before him. And uh, Mary Miller uh, was a freshman legislator. She is uh, married to um, a, a state legislator um, by the name of Chris Miller. These two are ultra conservative, um, very far right, you know, 100 percent MAGA, which I guess, you know, it's now the the label that, um, you know, the shorthand that they want to go by. Um, and so the two of them were uh, drawn into the same uh, district. Rodney Davis lost a lot of the current territory that he has represented, like I said, for the last decade. Um, and they had a fight to the death um, kind of uh, primary battle. But Mary Miller had, you know, all along when she announced, because uh, there was a question for a while, which district would she run in? Because she actually lives just outside of the 15th district. But when she announced uh, her decision to uh, run in the 15th district and run against Rodney Davis on New Year's Day, that announcement came with a Trump endorsement. And on Saturday, uh, former President Trump traveled to uh, Adams County, which is just across the river um, in the Quincy area. Uh, to endorse Miller and then also, you know, had a surprise endorsement of Darren Bailey, something that actually Darren Bailey has been gunning for for months. Um, oh. And so this is, you know, it's all kind of the same story of the GOP establishment um, getting trounced basically by this uh, wing of the party who, you know, they have proven that they don't want anyone telling them what to do. They're sick of that. Uh, you know, they feel disaffected. And this is the same story that we've been seeing from voters since 2015 when, you know, President Trump really arrived on the scene and galvanized these folks who a lot of them were previously, you know, people who might not have even been uh, politically active, might not have even voted before. Okay. And quickly, now that we focused on the GOP, let's turn to the Illinois 13th and uh, with a very quick answer from you with the Democratic leading district there after, and was an open seat because of the districts being redrawn after the 2020 census. Um, can you say that uh, it's it was safe that a Democrat was going to win there? Well, so uh, we have two women who are going to face off uh, uh, Democrat Nikki Budzinski, who most recently worked in the Biden administration and Governor J.B. Pritzker's administration before that. She's won her primary. And then Regan Deering, who is a conservative community activist, uh, activist rather, uh, from the Decatur area, um, hails from the family who founded uh, Archer Daniels Midland, um, a big soy processing giant uh, in central Illinois. She's won her uh, Republican primary. So, um, yes, this is a district that leans Democratic. But as Nikki Budzinski told me last night, she's not taking anything for granted because this could potentially, if there is enough GOP energy, this could be a swing district. Hannah Meisel, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. She is the government and politics editor for NPR Illinois. And I'd like to thank you very much again for joining us today on St. Louis on the Air. Thank you. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? 
suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.